Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video I will be talking about hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia on the dental chair as a medical emergency and how to manage it. So let's get started. So basically whenever there is a diabetic patient in dental clinic, we can come across uh, a medical emergency which can be either due to hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia but mostly in the clinic with the diabetic patients the medical emergency that usually occurs is hypoglycemia if we are not sure in the clinic whether a medical emergency in a diabetic patient's patient is because of hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia we should still treat it as hypo Glycemia only. So, firstly, hyperglycemia. So, hyperglycemia may present as loss of consciousness, or but it usually presents as an end of a much longer process. The time elapsed from the onset of symptoms to the loss of consciousness is at least forty-eight hours. The patient, the pres, the patient can present with dry, warm skin, rapid, weak pulse. And also we can, a patient can present with ketone breath and cosmos respiration, which is the breathing is almost that of what we see in hyperventilation. We see deep labored breathing in case of hyperglycemia. Then coming to the management. So management of hyperglycemic patients has been divided into two. First is that the patient is conscious in dental chair and the second treatment is the patient is unconscious in dental chair. So coming to the conscious patients, they are treated as ASA4 risk and the patient should not receive any kind of dental uh, treatment till the uh, physician is consulted and mostly when the physician is consulted they usually recommend that the, sh the treatment or the dental appointment should be postponed so we need to reschedule the appointment accordingly and coming to the management of unconscious patients the step first step is the termination of dental therapy and the immediate step after that is activation of the dental office emergency system then coming to step two, step two is the positioning of the patient. So the patient should be placed in supine or semi-supine position with legs elevated slightly and this helps in the increase of return of blood from the periphery. So this is a position in which the patient should be placed where the head, brain and heart of the patient are at the same level whereas the legs are slightly elevated. Then this is uh, the position of the patient in pregnant patients. The right hip is slightly elevated by 10 to 12 centimeter by placing a pillow or by placing a blanket on the right side on back of the hip and the patient is made to tilt 5 to 15 degrees to the left side so that the pressure on the vena cava is reduced as it can be seen in the diagram. Even after that if the patient is not relieved then we need to place the patient in completely left lateral position. Then step 3 is removal of dental materials from the mouth and step 4 is basic life support that is circulation, airway and breathing. So basically the first uh, what happens there is falling of the tongue backwards so it blocks the airway so now the airway needs to be cleared so how do we do that the first step is the head tilt chin lift procedure in that we place one hand on the chin of the patient and lift the chin in such a way so that the chin points into the air in line with the ear lobes so lifting the mandible and the tongue off the pharyngeal wall but we should not press deeply into the soft tissue under the chin because this might block the airway and we should be very careful that we don't close the victim's mouth completely while doing so. Then the if at all even after doing the head to chin position, uh, procedure if it's not restored the jaw thrust maneuver can be done in which we place one hand on each side of the victim's head and we place hand on uh, over the angles of the mouth and then we lift the jaw with both the hands by displacing the jaw forward. The third is your look, listen and feel technique in which we look for the chest movement and listen and feel for the air against our ear. And ear should be placed one inch from the nose and mouth while looking towards the victim's chest. Then 
we should pass we should also locate the carotid pulse and carotid pulse is locating by passing our fingers into the groove between the trachea and the muscles on the lateral aspect of the neck so we feel, uh, feel for the pulse for at least uh, 5 seconds but not more than 10 seconds and simultaneously we need to assess the victim for rise and fall of the chest. Uh, step 5 is summoning of medical assistance and step 5b is IV infusion is given if available which is usually not available in dental clinic. Till the medical team arrive we can actually uh, you know start 5% uh, dextrose so and water or we can start normal saline. Normal saline is preferred because the patient is already hyperglycemic. So 5% dextrose is basically used as a diluent. So we can start 5% dextrose and IV insulin can be given once the medical emergency team arrives and it, can, it should be administered carefully. Then the patient eventually requires hospitalization to correct the hyperglycemia and other deficits which might have occurred due to the emergency. Then step 5C is administration of oxygen. So though oxygen is basically uh, the patient is uh, presenting with symptoms not because the patient is not getting enough oxygen but even then oxygen can be administered in such patients it's of no harm as we've discussed in previous uh, in medical emergencies in dental office that oxygen can be administered in almost all the medical emergencies except hyperventilation and step 5d is transport of the patient to the hospital then coming to hypoglycemia so hypoglycemic patient can present with early or mild symptoms of diminished uh, diminished cerebral functions where there are changes in mood and this is followed by an increased epinephrine activity or sympathetic hyperactivity which uh, presents as sweating, tachycardia or you know increased anxiety. Management of such patients. So management of diabetic uh, hypoglycemia has been divided into three types. So first is your conscious and responsive patient. Then comes conscious and unresponsive patient and the third one is the unconscious patient. So coming to the conscious and responsive patient, step one is the recognition of hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemic patients may present with bizarre behavior and there are changes in persona personality and also in hyper in diabetic patients usually will present with a ketone breath. So whenever there's absence of uh, you know that uh, the breath that does not smell of alcohol, we should prompt the patient should think that the patient is presenting with hypoglycemia. So moreover, the patient is unable to respond to questions concerning diet and insulin intake of the patient. So step two is the termination of the dental procedure and step three is positioning the patient. So because the patient is conscious, we need to ask the patient and put them into the position in which they are most comfortable in. And usually that is an upright position in more, the patients are usually comfortable in the upright position. Then step Four is uh, circulation, airway and breathing that is BLS as it was indicated in hyperglycemia and step five is definitive care that is oral because the patient is conscious, conscious we need to administer sugar or orange juice or any kind of soft drinks can be given and carbohydrate at like you know three to four ounce doses every five to ten minutes that is around 80 grams to 110 grams can be administered every five to ten minutes till the patient actually starts recovering so and uh, once the patient recovers and the symptoms disappear we need to observe the patient for around one hour before allowing the patient to leave the office even after administering oral uh, juices or sugar if the patient doesn't recover the patient falls under the category of unresponsive conscious patients and the doctors now continue has to continue with the management of such patients so step one two three and four stay the same and in the definitive Care, we need to again administer oral sugar and if the patient is not responding we need to call for medical assistance and we need to start administering 
parenteral carbohydrate that is glucagon 1 mg im or iv can be given but iv line is usually not available in the dental clinic so glucagon 1 mg im may be given then 50 ml or 50 percent dextrose solution iv may be started over two to three minutes but again same thing iv line is usually not available in the dental clinic so we usually stick with 1 mg glucagon IM. Usually the patient responds within 10 to 15 minutes after IM glucagon administration or within 5 minutes after IV dextrose and once the patient starts responding to it then we can start the oral carbohydrates again and we need to monitor vital signs every 5 minutes till the medical assistance or medical help arise and then we can discharge the patient and subsequent dental treatment may be planned then coming to unconscious patients in unconscious patients the first step is termination of the dental procedure the second step differs that is positioning of the patient since the patient is unconscious we need to be place the patient in supine or semi supine position with legs elevated and step 3 is initiate basic life support so in glycemic patients in diabetic patients, usually hypoglycemia is because of low sugar. So mainly, you know, the circulation breath uh, is adequate and the breathing is spontaneous. The main thing that we need to take care of is their airway management. Because they're unconscious, their tongue falls backwards. So we need to basically, uh, you know, man uh, manage the airway of the patient in unconscious uh, hypoglycemic patients. Step 4 is definitive care and step 4A is again calling for medical help and step 4B is administration of carbohydrates that is 50 ml or 50% dextrose solution IV or IM glucagon can be given or epinephrine may be administered. So glucagon the onset of action is around 10 to 15 uh, 20 minutes and it peaks around 30 to 60 minutes. If neither glucagon nor dextrose is available in dental clinic during that time 0.5 mg of 1 is 2000 epinephrine can be given subcutaneously or intramuscularly and it should be repeated after every 15 minutes. Since epinephrine is available, readily available in the dental emergency kit, it may be used and it should be used with caution in cardiovascular patients because this, such patients can present with arrhythmias. So once the consciousness is restored, the patient can be again put on oral carb carbohydrates and in such patients, a small amount of honey or syrup can also be placed in the patient's buckle fold in the anterior sextant only and usually the onset of transmucosal administration of carbohydrates is 30 to 40 minutes and one very important thing to remember is the patients with diabetes type 1 should always carry glucagon with them and also the unconscious patient should never receive any liquid by a mouth that can liquefy at room temperature and run down their throat because it can increase the possibility of airway obstruction, pulmonary aspiration or both. So that brings us to the end of the video. So if you have any doubts or queries, you can leave a message in the comment section below. And if you've liked the video, do hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.